presentation today. Uh, so we may wrap up a little early, but we'll see how the uh, discussion flows. And uh, we don't have to have a, a hard stop at 2 o'clock. So if you go a little bit longer, that's fine too. But we can also uh, finish a little early. Uh, before we get started, I uh, want to see if anyone has any, any kind of updates for the group. Uh, anyone, any news to report, anything? Uh, folks online, you have to unmute yourself or use the chat function. Do we have any news to report? Uh, uh, we can. Um, okay. So future law registration is open. Uh, so I hope everybody checks that out. An email went out yesterday, and um, further email will be going out. But uh, check Codex Future Law, all one word, um, dot com. Uh, agenda to be posted soon. And next week we will be instead of our uh, Thursday meeting here, we will be having a Tuesday lunchtime speaker uh, meeting over in the classroom building. Julian Nar Narco, uh, one of our newest law professors. Uh, will be speaking on his work in the NLP arena. So um, please join us for that and uh, more information on law, uh, law.stanford.edu slash events or um, your email inbox. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, so with that, let's, uh, let's turn it over to Philip. Cool. Thanks a lot. Hi, everyone. Um, maybe one, two, one, two sentences about me, but um, we have more time for, for that later. So I'm I would say one of the only legal tech serial entrepreneurs from, from Germany. So I founded my first legal tech company in 2013, which was a marketplace for legal cases, quite similar to Rocket Lawyer here in the States. And we were doing that uh, for over six years and successfully sold that company to Anwalt.de, which is the biggest competitor. Um, and then I founded a company and I invested in a company called Visa Right. We help people to, uh, in the whole process to, to getting a visa. Um, you had someone similar in the same area last week, which was quite interesting for us as well to, to share some knowledge. And now I joined um, Law Pilots. Um, so let's start it. Uh, let's start. So um, first question maybe to everyone online and everyone here in the room. Uh, who of you ever had to do a training in the area of compliance? Hands up. Most of, most of them. And uh, the next question would be, who of you had fun doing that? <laughs> Not many people. Um, and that brings me actually to the, to the first slide. So if you think you don't need employee training, uh, and um, you, you know, the thing is, it's, it's expensive, um, so the thing is, try non-compliance, you know? So that's actually a big issue, but you know, it needs to be done. Um, the CCPA is a recent example. Uh, so we celebrated here in the States, uh, so one, one month of CCPA, which is the California Consumer Privacy Act, which came into effect at the beginning of, of this year. And it affects around 500,000 companies. So um, we are the experts of GDPR when it comes to, to Europe, and, uh, uh, but let me get back to that later. So um, now we focus on CCPA as well in the States. Um, so the thing is, it's, you know, it's difficult, it's super boring and it's very hard to, to train as well. Um, so, you know, regulation is, is, is a very hard topic and um, the employees have problems in understanding that there are trainings out there, classroom trainings which are super uh, expensive and, and super time consuming and the typical e-learnings um, are boring and, and uh, the employees don't like them. Um, so that's actually the reason um, we came up with our solution and we offer super innovative, fun trainings everywhere in the world. Um, we work with learning specialists together, uh, with lawyers to, to build the courses. And I'll show you in a minute how, the, how they look. And um, um, oh, can I actually, should I maybe? What do you need to do? Uh, yeah, because you can't see the whole screen. Um, where should I click? To get the thing on the side away? Yeah. Just, just make it smaller. Because thing. my mouse is is a bit away. Uh, wait. Oh. No. Sorry, technical issues. That looks, at least on my screen, much better. Uh, yeah, folks online don't see that. Uh, so. Yeah, that's just... You can, you, can, you, can, you, can, uh, can you give me the mouse? Yeah. Okay. So we can... 
sorry, sorry for technical issues, no but problem. then everyone sees it here in the room as well. So, so we established these courses. Um, we are three years old. We are based in Berlin, and we, we came up with this, these trainings. Um, when the uh, GDPR uh, came into effect in 2018, we were already up and running and then sold the courses. So they're super fun and um, your company will be legally you know, compliant um, because you have to train, it's mandatory, you have to train your employees. Um, this is how our platform looks um, and I will get more into detail in, in a minute. Um, we are super flexible, um, so you can buy courses online, you can call us, um, so super easy to, to adjust the courses as well. So we do customization. Um, at the end of every training, every employee gets a certificate, and we already have over 30 country and language versions. Um, why is that? Because the GDPR is a bit different uh, in Italy, a bit different in Spain, a bit different in Germany, so we always adjust. Um, the content, and of course, we have many languages to you know to to scale the whole product. Um, so, how do these courses look like? Um, we, as I said, we created these very intelligent uh, courses. So we, have, you know, it's all about gamification. So uh, you have a lot of fun. We have quizzes. We design these comics as well. Uh, at the end of every section, you have a test. Um, which you have to pass, you have at least, you have to pass at least 75% to get the certificate. Um, and people love our courses. We have over 93% over of our um, uh, customers are happy and, um, and uh, tell everyone else that, that they loved it uh, at, at Trustpilot. And um, so that, that's what we do. And um, uh, and I show you in a bit uh, how, how that looks in detail. We are uh, in four different areas. So, um, so data protection is a, is a huge topic, which is mandatory. Uh, then occupational safety and health um, as well, which is you know work hazard topics, and then compliance and information security. So, um, these these are the the topics we we take care of, and we offer around 26 courses all together. Um, so you can even break it down to so compliance for hospitals, compliance for HR departments. So we kind of uh, go into the different niche topics as well. How do we make money? So it's a subscription-based license model. So we charge per employee, and uh, it's very good for us because it's you know these are mandatory trainings. So we train these companies um, or these employees every year. Uh, so it's annual recurring revenue. Um, they really trust us and give us, uh, you know, give us a trust. So they already sign up for three to five years uh, in, the, in the future to work with us together. We already, you know, have a huge of, we always already cross selling, which means that you know we we sell bundles to to companies, so they're interested in you know data protection and information security um, and so forth so on. So they give us a lot of feedback if they liked it, and, and we adjust the courses as well year by year, so they get better and we have fresh content. Um, some achievements uh, we are very successful at. We already. Uh, are profitable uh, after the first 12 months or became profitable, um, which was good for us. We have already a, a seven-digit turnover, um, which is good. We have 80% recurring customers, so around 20% churn, which is very good. Uh, we have around 850 companies worldwide, and I will show in a minute uh, we're working with, and um, our growing team in Berlin. These are some satisfied customers you see here. Uh, so why do I show that? Um, because you see the range of different companies. So we just won Volkswagen. Um, we have all these dudes, it's made famous in the States as well. So we have private companies, but we have as well um, public organizations uh, which, which work with us as well. So it's, uh, we don't go to, into a specific niche or so. So we really focus on so every, every company can approach us and, and can work with us. So it's really a, a huge range. And even you know single entrepreneurs can can train themselves, and then you know folks working with thousands of employees they they trust as well in us and and, and train their employees. A bit about the market so uh, the market is growing every year, so um, western europe uh, the market is is growing, which is you know 
relatively small when you see it on the left side. So the right side, when, you, when you're talking about the American states, so 40% of the global turnover uh, is generated in the United States of America. So you guys here know what you're doing and you know what e-learnings uh, are. And uh, so the market is growing every year and people understand what we do. So these old, boring, you know, classroom trainings, no one is doing that anymore. Um, and, you know, these, let's say, ugly PowerPoints, which you have to click through, they are dying as well. So people understand that e-learnings are the future. Um, why are we actually in the, in the, in the States? Uh, here on the Beamer, you can't see the map 100%. It looks better on the... On the, on the screen, I think the, the, the audience online can see it much better. Yeah. Um, so um, we just started in the American states here. We, we have an office downtown in San Francisco because the CCPA uh, just came into effect a couple of weeks ago, as I said, which affects many, many employees. Um, so and they orientate uh, on the GDPR, especially they like the German expertise on data protection. Uh, Brazil will follow with the uh, act by the end of August. South Africa is following, and here you see that really the world is getting closer together when it comes to uh, data protection. So that is good for every one of us, I think, and it's uh, good, of course, for us as law pilots because people really want and have to train their employees. So um, that's very positive. So as I said, we are in the, in the States at the moment and we are looking for support. Uh, we talked to many uh, potential resellers and content partners. So if people uh, are listening to, to the speech here, um, we are very happy uh, if, if, you, if you want to contact us. Um, so we're looking for you know, legal partners, content partners, and we build up a network here already of potential customers. If you're interested, you can uh, test our courses um, online or you can shoot us an email if you're interested in, in testing our courses. And um, yes, that's, um, that's basically it. A few sentences about the team. So as I said, I'm, I'm the managing director and I'm in the legal field for many years now. Uh, Dieter Kerkfeld um, was, or is in the e-learning industry for many years already. He, he's the founder of, of Law Pilots, uh, together with Simona and Katrin, who are lawyers and then uh, Stefan, who is an expert in you know, growing companies. So it's actually, actually a very strong team we have. We are growing. And um, if, you, if you like, join the team So uh, in Berlin or maybe here in the States as well. And um, that's actually it for, for me. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to chat with us here. And stand Great. So, yeah, so uh, thank you. Thank you, Philip. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, so the uh, first question I have is, uh, so this is to train all the employees in an organization, uh, or is it for sub-segments of the employees? And the second question is, is it, um, do you also offer courses for people to become like data protection gurus, or data protection, whatever, whatever they call it, the data... Data privacy offices. Okay. All pro data yeah. privacy offices, is that also part of what you do? Um, so. Um, when you talk about GDPR, um, every em so the GDPR is saying that every employee of a company has to be trained in right. data protection, which is right. huge. So even if you are, have your own uh, corporation whatsoever, in German it's a GmbH or so, and you are the only employee there, you have to train basically yourself. Okay. So that's a huge market. Um, I think there are 230 million people who, ha who potentially have to be trained. <coughs> Uh, as well, to, you know, compared to huge companies, which thousands of employees which have to be trained as well. When you talk about the CCPA here in, in California now, which just got released, it's a bit different. So you have to train your employees, which are in contact whatsoever when, uh, uh, with um, uh, uh, customer data, personal data of customers, which is not the whole company, which is more, you know, customer service, sales, marketing, not everyone, maybe people who work in the tech area as well. So that's a bit limited, but it's still a huge market for us. Okay. Yeah. And our, so we talk, there was your second question, we talk, so we approach the uh, compliance officers of huge companies. If the company is a bit smaller, we talk to the CEO of the company, um, who then, you know, uh, is testing our courses and then decides if he want to work with, if he want to work with us or not. Uh, or the data privacy officer, or the HR department as well. So we have different kind of touch points in the company. Mm -hmm. 
speaking about uh, data protection, uh, how are you using the data of your own customers? Are you like uh, using it to improve the course offerings and that kind of stuff? Um, we have to be very careful as well because mm -hmm. we are in like in the tank, in the shark tank. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have to be careful. Um, that was a tricky question, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we do is, because um, we know. How how, um, and we get better on that, you know, at the end it's, uh, you know, we have to know how long do people take to to, to, to go through the, the course. It's between, normally between 20 and 40 minutes, that's what, we, that's what we say. So people who know the topic already are super fast and do it in 20 minutes. People who have had no touch point whatsoever before with data protection, they need more than an hour or so. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what we do is we have to be very careful with the, really the personal data, but we know which sections they like, where they took more time and stuff like this. But if a person did the course, uh, for example, five times and five, five times, we're not allowed to, do, to, to know that. We know at the end if he got the certificate or not. And that's okay. important for the company because if company they have to take a test at the correct. end. Correct. Uh, correct. So at every <coughs> that's what I maybe I can scroll scroll back as well if you want. So um, so at the end uh, uh, the the bottom left you see this is one of our tests. So two characters are speaking with each other and she's asking, "Hey okay, Jennifer, I have to uh, send an Excel file uh, to a colleague. How do I have to do that? Um, um, or uh, can I can I actually do that?" So we so after every section, you learn um, what you just, uh, or you, 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 they, we ask questions about what you just learned. So after every section, we have these tests, and people like it because uh, they can, you know, test the, the what they just learned. Uh, that's important. And, that makes um, sense. Mm -hmm. Correct. So so that's what we know, and we always adjust these these games as well. In the beginning, it's a funny story. The tests were too too hard, so um, most of the employees failed because it was too too much, you know, too much in detail. So we kind of eased it a bit, so uh, so they really pass it as well. It was it was too much, uh, yeah, it was too difficult actually. <laughs> so, so we don't go. Okay. I mean, we think we don't go 100% uh, to the bottom of the of the GDPR lake, let's say, or of the mm -hmm. ocean. So we grasp upon the the basic uh, information that you really know what to do and what not to do during your day. Okay, that's very important. And what what is the in a GDPR context or a CCPA context, what uh, enforcement um, actions would the government take? You know, how do how's the government monitoring compliance uh, or the level of knowledge of the different companies' employees? That's actually a good question. So, I mean, it's relatively new for everyone. So, in 2018, uh, everyone. Uh, you know, didn't care too much about it, especially other countries than, than Germany. They said, yeah, you know, GPR is, is okay into effect now, but let's see if that really affects us. But nowadays you see that there are many data breaches. Big companies already got huge fines. Mm -hmm. So the companies really wake up and it's, you know, it's from really small mistakes that, you know, suddenly someone from the customer service is giving personal data to someone out of the company which uh, was not allowed to get this, get, get, this, get the data, and that's already a data breach. And then you have 48 hours to kind of claim that there, it was a breach, and, um, if, and, and then there is actually tests from, from, from the state how huge the effect is on, on other people and, and your company as well. Okay. So um, they're really testing that, and the certificate, of course, is not that you can say, you know, I trained my employees and now I can do whatever I want, of course. It's mm -hmm. only to, you know, get them into the mood and to understand what GDPR is about. But um, we kind of, we don't guarantee that your employees will never do a mistake in the okay. future. That's important, um, especially for, for liability topics. Okay. All right. Any other questions? For um, oh, I'm sorry. I have a hopefully quick question. Um, I understand that a number of standardization organizations are considering release of privacy series like ISO or Triple E. Um, so, are you looking ahead to see about any certification that you might offer vis-a-vis -vis that kind of? That's a little bit more yeah. upscale from just the garden variety employee. That would probably correct. Very good question. Interesting. That's very interesting because there is n n no um, standard out there at the moment. We work on a standard mm -hmm. uh, for Europe for the GDPR. But who are you working with? EU. Uh, yeah. Correct. So there are governments and, and institutions who take care of that. So we talk with them at the moment, and we hope that we get it done. Uh, it's pretty complicated, 
but it, that will be the future because at the moment everyone could give you a certificate and can, could, could tell you um, here it is and you are trained well but um, but and you could put a stamp on that but um, uh, n not guaranteeing that you know this person learned anything or so but well yeah I would, sorry I was thinking for auditing purpose like you could do correct. a UL audit like you currently do for ISA standards correct ISA and, and that will be the future yeah. that will be the future mm -hmm. so so there will be a standard the GDPR and maybe CCPA standard in the future mm -hmm. yeah cool um, go ahead and then we have yeah, online so first, uh, congratulations on being a successful serial entrepreneur. It's not easy to do. Uh, and also, I want to compliment you that you've picked a field that's a very hot one, and it's one that I know quite a bit about. The reason I know a bit about it, and this offer, this is both a question but also some suggestions for you too. So I used to be a CIO, a chief information officer for a billion dollar size company, several of them over a certain number of years. And we used e-learning just like what you've described here for information security, data protection, and roll into your question. So we did it on a wide scale basis for like all employees to know about phishing and spoofing and other things like that. And they usually would have a catalog. So we'd have, okay, the beginner type classes for everybody, yep. and then they'd have more advanced classes that we would use, let's say, for my IT team. So it was a, a variety. One of the weaknesses for most of the startups that approached me you know, wanting me to use their e-learning capabilities is that they had crafted the content, and many of them were going gamification and making it you know, much better than it had been before. Where their weakness was, they didn't have an underlying e-learning engine for example, what I wanted to know is who in the company has taken it, who hasn't taken it, who signed up, but they delay taking it, uh, who has failed it two or three times, where, where are their patterns of those that are failing so that that way as a company yep. we can do things to kind of aid them. So the question for you in a moment will be is do you have an existing e-learning engine underneath or do you connect? Because another thing is we actually had an e-learning engine in the company already and so our preference would be to plug into that Correct. rather than having to switch over to somebody else's. Correct. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, so good question. So what we do is um, you can train the employees on our platform, which is cloud-based, but if you have your own learning uh, experience platform or your learning platform in general, you can, we give you the code and you can kind of, as you said, you can plug and play. So you get our course and you can roll it out on, a, on your internal platform. So we do that, especially the big companies, they all have learning platforms, so they want to train on their own platform. That's important. Um, I, I again uh, went back to that slide. So you can see on the top right, you see our management cockpit. That's how we call it. So there you see your different uh, employees, and you, you see uh, who already passed the, who got the certificate, who still has to do it. You can send out automatic reminders uh, to your employees saying, hey, you didn't uh, do the, um, the, 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 the course, um, you still have to do it, so we send the reminders. And we go more and more into this, as I would call it, business intelligence. So to know more, like what they like, where do they drop out, uh, why do they stop here, and all these information is important. Maybe one more detail, uh, detailed thing about our courses is that you, all, you can always, uh, when it's in the browser at least, when you do it with our platform, uh, you can kind of pause, you can, I don't know, grab a coffee and whatever, or, and then continue tomorrow. That's very important. So you don't have to do it in once. That's very important that the, the, the employees love that. Because you know how it is, especially, for example, in the, in the hospitals, you do the course for five minutes, then in the emergency, you have to go again, you know, to you know, help people. Then you go back, then you have again five minutes to, to finish up. So, um, that, that's, so we listen to actually a lot of our customers and clients and we want to know how they train, what is difficult, so a lot of, let's say, customer feedback which we, which we get. <coughs> so, um, so we are growing on that and I think there was another question you had, content-wise, you know, it's important that we get always the, um, the kind of uh, pr the check, the stamp of a, of a law firm saying that the content which is delivered here is on a standard that um, it's not, you know, super, super 100% deep, so um, an employee would drop out, but it's not, you know, only the first 5% of GDPR. So we, as I always say, we at LawPilots, we translate legal language to, you know, normal speaking language. That's very important. So in our course, there's, there's non-paragraph uh, uh, sign or whatever, so it's all, so, Think about there is someone who had no connection whatsoever with data protection, he will get what data protection is about. And that's actually our huge golden key, I would say, to success. And we're looking here for partners at the moment to, to get this kind of stamp as well for, for the states. Okay. Um, yeah. 
first of all, congratulations to that approach. I think this is very, very valuable that you like translate the legal terms into a normal, understandable language uh, for all of, all of the employees. What I was wondering about um, with regard to this slide also, um, you told us a little bit about um, the availability in over 30 countries and languages. Um, this does not only, you know, like mean different languages, but also is this also related to the content? Like, you, you know, maybe um, that there is these opening clauses, and what I was wondering about is this also, or does this also mean that you have um, the national? Um, yeah, differences in mind. We, like we do, we do. Good questions. Yeah. I, I thought I'm trying to make that or made that clear before. So that's actually what we do. So GDPR differs in the different countries. So we always work with experts in the different uh, countries to adapt the courses to the national needs. Um, so, the, or for example, if you book the uh, uh, GDPR course for Italy in English, it's different than the one in English for Germany, or the one in Spain in uh, what's a crazy language? Uh, Romanian, for example. Uh, so we can offer that. That's well, the GDPR itself is not different, but rather like you know the federal uh, data protection Correct. statute. Correct. So national. Also in Germany. Yeah. Very much. So national laws. We always say that all courses are, let's say, 90% uh, up to scale, uh, and the last 10% are adaptions for national needs. That's not an, an easy task yeah, to deal with, actually. Large, um, so we need to work with lawyers in the different uh, countries to, yeah, to they, we need the help there because we are not the experts in the different uh, uh, countries. And the same here for the states. So we, we are just working on the CCPA course, which is hopefully uh, ready soon. Um, and we work here with law firms together here uh, in California, especially. And the same, we know how CCPA works, but in detail and what the, all this federal law is connected to and all these topics, we need uh, support here as well. But it's a, the GDPR is a regulation, and it's, so it's immediately effective, applicable in the member states. So what are the differences then? Uh, huh. Yeah, the problem is um, it's a regulation, but indeed um, there are several opening clauses, which makes it, in, to some extent, um, Kind of turns away from being a regulation, but being kind of flexible when it comes to national um, differences or implementation. Or yeah, implementation. Like, implementation. Especially, for example, uh, Germany has made use of um, these opening clauses for the tax code a lot because federal administration doesn't want people to say, "Okay, can I have access to all of my uh, tax data?" Uh, you, you know, there are some fields of um, um, especially administration, um, where they don't want to open up okay. all of their knowledge. It's, and they don't have to provide access under the, to yeah, everything. To some extent, yeah, some yeah that's kind of yeah, yeah, the process kind of going on. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, we have a couple of people online, and I, okay. I think to some extent Ramona's question addressed Scott. So um, Maeve has been waiting patiently. She says, Philip, thank you for this presentation and congratulations on the 93% of satisfied companies. How have you received feedback from the 7% who aren't satisfied? <laughs> and what did they not enjoy about your product? Um, I mean, so... so uh, they what? just got up on the wrong foot in the morning. <laughs> Maybe. No, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a personal thing, thing. So, for example, some people think it's very... Um, you know, you can do it in 20 minutes and, and, and you're happy and you're done. Uh, some people take an hour and then they were, were complaining that, you know, it takes too much time, for example. There was always that it was too long. They um, didn't pass the test, maybe. They said it was a bit too hard in, um, in, 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 in a specific area. So these are probably the 7%, I would say. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, after they finish um, the, the courses, they get a link from us and they can um, give, give us feedback on uh, um, um, uh, not law pilots, it's uh, trust pilot. Uh, so it's an official website, and you can see. I mean, if this person is interested, um, she, she, I think she can check it out on, on trust pilot. Can see our check out our reviews, what what people say. Most of them, I think, is in German, but I think you can translate it as well. And people really send us love letters and say well, that was the coolest hour of my of my month, and I really had fun in doing that. So. Um, you know, seven percent. That's 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 not an issue for us. Could, could you uh, put in in the chat the URL? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thank you.
Excuse me? Oh, wait, we have um, a new mess. Sorry. Um, and that's oh, she one. says, ha-ha, the wrong foot comment made me chuckle. Thanks for the feedback. I'll check mm -hmm. the trust pilot review. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Okay, how do you make the context of, of this topic, which is very hard to digest sometimes, or most of the time? It's like explaining tax form to people who don't manage the topic. Uh, who designed the, the content and how do you measure the, that level of satisfaction of the way you communicate it? Yeah, good question. So we actually, our strongest team, or one of the strongest teams uh, in Berlin is actually the content team. So we have experts which are learning psychologists, uh, lawyers, uh, designers, UX, UI designers as well, and they design these courses and of course our lawyers. So Simona Katrin, the founders, uh, they back us with their law firm. So they put in uh, all the you know, legal knowledge and we try to translate it, as I said, into, into these courses. Um, and you know, we, the satisfaction, we kind of, the, the barometer of the satisfaction is then trust pilot where we see are these people happy or not. Um, so, um, and of course we get direct feedback from the companies and you know, success shows that people go for five years already and uh, that they test with us in year, one year, and if everyone is happy, they book us for the next five years, basically. So that's how we see that we are successful and that people are happy. So if they would only book our course for one year, and they would say, ah, next year we, you know, we not train, or we take another um, course or another provider, then you know, we would know that people are not satisfied, but okay. it's not the case. But um, the content is the king, so that's our, our, let's say, our gold nugget there. So we really work on that a lot. You know, we shoot videos with experts. We talk to companies. They tell us how do you actually implement that in your company, and so forth and so on. So that's um, that's important. Okay, thank you. So Scott had two questions. I think the first one you answered already about the translating it into different uh, countries. Uh, Maybe if you ask, if you're also using some IT solutions and doing your translations, um, any automated? You probably have humans to the correct. At the moment, it's humans, but we think about doing that. There are some providers as well in Germany which are uh, very known, so you, you could translate it as well. But translation always takes time because sometimes we dub the videos with experts, um, mm -hmm. so we shoot it in German and then we dub it. But sometimes for specific customers as well, we shoot it as well in the in the language they want. Okay. And then the other question is, uh, if you're working with uh, any law schools in Germany or any of your other countries, mm -hmm. uh, maybe law schools that may already have online platforms. Um, in terms of that they want to... I don't know. I'm just uh, yes. you're collaborating. And perhaps even teaching um, th uh, these approaches to uh, online courses for GDPR, for example, turn these uh, more into courses, for example, uh, that might be uh, taught in a law school, for example. Um, okay, I know what you mean. So the thing is, uh, we are with law pilots in the area which is legally regulated, you know, so if there is a law in, in Germany, the um, money laundering Act just came into effect, um, so we always, you know, take these new laws and then put it into different courses. We would never, I mean, not at the beginning because we, we need to focus. We would never, uh, now offer a course for the area which is, you know, super far away from our core ability. Uh, but still, if, if it is related to law and GDPR taught in a, in a, in, in a, in a, in a university or so, we could definitely do that. But you know, people sometimes, the companies, they love our course so much. So for example, we had one we have a huge company, they, uh, they build the pipelines in the world and they ask us, because it's super complicated to construct these pipelines and to put them together, that we do a course in how to construct these pipelines. And we said, oh, that's very nice, but it's super far away from our core um, and, and from, from, from what we do in the normal business. So we have to focus, of course. But if okay. it is connected to, to legal topics, then, then we're happy. Cool. All right. Uh, any other? We are already a little bit over our standard time, but since we only have one presentation, uh, we still we can still take more questions if there are more questions. If not, we can wrap it up now. So I think most people in the room had already had asked some questions. Anyone online have a final question? No. Okay. All right. Well, then let's let's close here then.
uh, thank you all for, for coming. Thank you, Philip, for, for coming in and uh, telling us about your exciting venture. Uh, given your track record, uh, given everything you shared, uh, this, uh, it seems like it's going to be your next, uh, next big, big uh, success story. Pleasure. And, and one and sentence, maybe, so we are here until the end of March for sure. Maybe we prolong as well and stay for good here and open a company. So if people want to help us here in, yeah. in California, happy to, to, you know, to, to get in talk with you guys. And, um, Great, yeah. So uh, I think that's good to know. You might actually, you know, kind of uh, put a link or something on our yep. Facebook group. There's many times that people who are uh, actually looking for opportunities like that. Cool. And uh, yeah, so also, yeah, Meve also says thank you for the presentation. Actually, uh, just uh, word on my my comment about the people who get up on the wrong foot. You know, i you know, I'm teaching a course every year, and the students always evaluating. Uh, just, you get a questionnaire at the end of the uh, end of the course, and most of the time people are always uh, excited and thrilled, but there's always someone. <laughs> <laughs> so, not to like you know, not to look for justifications or something. And there's you know good points that people have, but sometimes people just uh, get up on the wrong foot. So that's why I said that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay, well, uh, uh, okay, all right, well, great. Great session. Thanks for coming. Thanks, and uh, please join us next uh, Tuesday for um, for the session with uh, Professor uh, Nyarko. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll you should receive and you should have received already some information yeah. about it. But we'll send out Somewhere probably another have, reminder before yeah, before the event. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all, and see you soon. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye.